So I started taking uh, pictures of this uh, Lego little character. I call him Rocket Man. My daughter says call him Kevin, so we call him Kevin the Rocket Man. It began as a creative outlet. One day I was at work, just a little frustrated, so I went outside and took a picture of it. And then I shared it on Instagram, and many of my followers were saying, hey, that's a cool picture. Uh, I took one uh, the next day, posted it, and people were enjoying it. So. Then I thought, you know what, let me do a whole year challenge and uh, take a picture of it every single day. Right now, as of this video, I have about 10 weeks left for the year. So I'm um, coming up to almost being done with this challenge. I was thinking of putting all the 365 images into some sort of a picture book. I don't know. What do you think? Let me wonder. What's going on everybody? Claudio Zavala Jr. here. If this is your first time stopping by, thank you so much for checking this channel out. If you are a returning guest or visitor, thank you so much for stopping by once again. So today I'm going to show you how I accomplished this effect using Photoshop. I call it the floating object effect. I don't know if that's the official term for it, uh, but it makes sense. So we're going to go ahead and use that term. It's actually pretty easy to do. It just takes a little bit of patience. So let me show you how to do that on my desktop. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right. So what I've done is opened up both images in Photoshop. I have the image with the wax there holding the Frisbee and one without. There's a reason I did that. What I'm going to do is grab the image that's without the Frisbee and hold the shift button and drag it to the other image. Holding shift will help me keep it in place. What I'm going to use is a tool to reveal the background, basically remove the wax and show you what's behind it. Let's zoom in a bit here. And I'm going to use the eraser tool, set the opacity somewhere between 50 and 60, leave everything else the way it is. I'll start removing some of this area. You can adjust the brush size and start removing some of that top layer and basically reveal the layer behind it. I'm gonna zoom in some more to get closer and start removing some more of that layer or area underneath the Frisbee. So what I've done is remove some of that area there is the Frisbee layer with the wax removed. If I turn it off, you can see behind it. What I've done is remove some of that area. And so basically revealing the image behind it. The next thing I'm going to do is use a tool called the clone stamp tool to remove some of that wax buildup around the legs. I don't want that to be shown in the image. So I'm zooming in here. I'm going to hold the option key and click in the area around it and start basically cloning on top of that wax to make it match the area behind it. So option click and just start filling in that area to make it match. Now that I have the area around the leg fixed up, I'm going to move over to the open space underneath the Frisbee. Before I do that, I'm going to merge these two layers. I'm going to zoom in here to get close up and hold again the option and click, and I'll start filling in the area underneath. I'll try to make that shadow area match to kind of give it that look that the light is actually coming from that direction. I'm going to continue using the clone stamp tool to fill in that lighter area underneath the Frisbee and on that wooden area, fill it in little by little, just try to do it basically eyeballing it until it matches to the original background image. And lastly, get into that Frisbee area, continue using that clone stamp tool to match that line underneath. 
And there you go, I have the floating frisbee in space. It looks like I've taken the picture like that, but all it is is the magic of using clone stamp tool and the eraser tool, blending two images, making it into one. And I can eventually export this as a JPEG to share out. And that's it. That's how you can create floating objects using Photoshop. So what do you think? Pretty easy? I'd say give it a try, test it out. One thing I do highly, highly recommend is making a backup of your original images. Just in case something happens, you have uh, the originals to fall back and try again. Please let me know what you thought about this video. Add your comments in the section below. If you found this video helpful or learned something new, please give it two thumbs up. Click on that like button there. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on that notification button there. Thanks again for stopping by. Be good to one another. Until next time, peace. I'm out.